I'm grateful for the flexibility of the organizers. So the question is really, is it possible to build a global brand from Hungary? And I think the question is really, is it possible to rebuild a global brand from Hungary in our case, uh, given that Tungström has a long history as a global brand? And uh, if you look at this, this is a, an image of our headquarter building in, in Uipest. Some of you might have passed by. Some people call it the ENDS, so the United Nations building. I heard, I heard that only after I bought the company. Um, seven months, so basically 3rd of April we, we bought the company, or I bought the company as a management buyout uh, from G Lighting. You might have heard G is going through difficult times. They're selling a couple of, of businesses and uh, G Lighting was for sale for a couple of years. Um, and it's been really interesting seven months. So one of the most important challenges that we have is can we rebuild Tungström? Now if you look at the, the, the world if you want to, um, Hungary obviously is a special case for us. So Tungström is known in Hungary. It has always been known. Even though I must say I have some colleagues, one of them is with me, 23 years old, who goes like Tungström, hmm. But uh, the older generation knows Tungström. So we, we split the world into sort of three parts. Hungary, then there are countries where Tungström is known, and to some extent G Lighting never stopped using Tungström. So that's mainly like Middle East, North Africa, places like, let's say, previous, call them socialist brother and sister countries, so like Vietnam, Angola, um, Argentina, places like this, and then there are all the others. So if you go today to Australia and you ask anyone about Tungström, specialists, the lighting specialists probably remember, um, but the person on the beach will probably not. So the, the question is, when you, when you look at what we have done, how can we sort of build the brand again? And our brand statement is, innovation is our heritage. Now, you know, these statements, obviously, a lot of companies have them, so we thought a lot about that. So there's innovation there, there's our there, and there's heritage. Okay, I mean, you can read it yourself. But um, we're very, very proud of the heritage of innovation. And our statement means that this is what we would like to link to and we would like to continue. So basically we would like to rebuild the company as an innovative Hungarian company that has a global aspiration. So today, actually last week, we took over the last foreign subsidiaries that were part of the deal. So now we have uh, subsidiaries in 25 countries and we have business partners, distributors in more than 100 additional countries. So clearly, we, we are becoming a Hungarian multinational, a modio multi, if you want to. Um, and I must say, I mean, I've been looking around, um, and I don't want to sound um, arrogant, but there is not many. There's not many Hungarian-owned, um, Hungarian-headquartered multinational companies with an aspiration of innovation, with the history of innovation, and uh, a proven track record, if you want to. So what happened is, in 1989, basically, the company, you can, I don't want to, to go through all the, the details here, but in 1989, um, Tungsum was bought by G Lighting. This was the first larger acquisition, uh, let's say. It was even started before the system change. And um, I think that was very important, because without that acquisition, Tungsum wouldn't exist today. So I think we, we have to, to be very clear uh, and in a very grateful that GE decided to invest a billion dollars into Tungsum in the, the first couple of years particularly. And that's why Tungsum still exists. You know, there is a lot of Hungarian uh, traditional uh, companies that were very strong um, before the Second World War in the socialist times that unfortunately don't exist anymore. Tungsum is still there, it's intact because of that. Now what happened is that GE kind of lost a bit of the focus on, on lighting they were focused on other industries, and um, as I said, it was for sale eventually. Um, so it became, there, became a, there was a moment when there was an opportunity to raise my hand and basically buy the company. Now in the meantime, um, Tungström was not used widely. So now we have a situation where we have a brand that is like uh, 
traditional strong, but hasn't been used really for 30 years. And um, I mean, I've seen in Hungary successful sort of relaunches of brands like Traubi Soda or any of those. Um, but now we are talking about a global brand. Now, I haven't seen Traubi Soda in Germany. Maybe that's, that's, there's an opportunity. Um, but now we are, we are competing with the Osrams, the Philips, the Schraders, all these, these companies in the world with a Tungstrom that some people vaguely remember, but um, the younger generation doesn't, obviously. Um, so this is where we, where we come from. So as I said, we always go back to the innovative core and history. So that's part of the brand that we're building is we have that long history of innovation. We were uh, a company with the first industrial laboratory outside of the US built after the model of Thomas Edison. Ashna Lipot basically was, was doing that uh, in 1920. So this was an industrial laboratory um, that was built to develop solutions, innovation for the market. And interestingly enough, even today, like 100 years later, we are struggling, and Hungary to some extent is struggling with innovation as we define it. Innovation is something that someone is willing to pay for. So that's the difference between research and innovation if you want to. Now, Hungary has a very strong capability of research, but not as strong capability of turning that research into a marketable product. Now, this was a role that Tungsum always had, and we believe should have again in the future, and we are working on that. At the same time, as I said, it's one of the few truly global companies with global aspirations. So that's the other part of the market core of the brand. So innovation, global, meaning also from a corporate culture, from a, let's say, international reach, we have, obviously, majority of our employees are Hungarian. The language of the company is Hungarian and English. Um, but it's important that it's also English, and we will not drop it. So we have to be that place where, for example, a Hungarian who lives abroad today and would like to come back to Hungary can work in an international environment in a Hungarian company in a, in a challenging and meaningful way. It's probably the most, I would say, and obviously I'm biased, it's probably the most challenging transformation in the country. So if anyone would like to do something with impact, uh, a satisfying job where you can see the results, that's at Tungsum today. We have products, obviously what I call the core. We have all sorts of light, um, traditional LED for buildings, um, for outdoors, um, obviously LED mostly in, in Nordkornische. Um, automotive lighting, we are sort of the third globally on automotive lighting, which is one of the areas that we have taken over completely uh, from, from GE. We have, and that's I think also very important, because of automotive lighting, we have very, very high quality standards. And that becomes very important now as we're looking for what else do we do. So we know that the lighting industry is an industry that is going through, call it now disruption, disrupted by LED. So when you look at what we're doing, major the majority of what we're doing is conventional lighting, we call it halogen, or in cars, xenon lamps. Um, the old ISO lumpers or incandescent lamps. So we do the whole range, 6,000 different products. The only problem is the customer doesn't want to buy it anymore. They want to buy LED. So from, from that point of view, we have what a lot of companies will be having ahead of them. We're already being disrupted. So now we have two options. We shrink and then uh, at some point disappear. Uh, and that's happening with uh, some of our particularly smaller competitors. Or we see what else we can do. What else can we do with our existing infrastructure and technology? And um, I, I stop here because it's very important when you are an automotive supplier, as we are, we are basically delivering lamps for, for cars, then you have very high aspirations. So you have to have fulfillment rates of 100%. You can have uh, defects per million parts of maybe one or two. Because effectively, you know, a car is, is, is consisting of 3,000 different, different parts coming from hundreds of suppliers. So if any of those parts doesn't, breaks, the car basically cannot be delivered to the customer. Now, the good thing is if you have this kind of level, then it takes another 10% and you're in, in the avi aviation industry. So now we are looking at aviation industry, for example. 
Now we are looking at places where it's difficult to enter, difficult to enter for, for our Asian competitors. We say they're very good products from Asia, they're very bad products from Asia. So I always used to say that Gucci is doing stuff in Asia, and then obviously others, and I'm not naming anyone uh, who is doing stuff in Asia. So good products, bad products, we have to compete, and we can compete. So when I look at unit cost, apples to apples, apple to apple, we can compete with anyone in the world. Uh, at the same time, as I said, customers don't want to buy conventional products. So now the brand, which used to be a lighting brand, has to become a tech, a tech, a high-tech brand, if you want to. So that's the other thing we're trying to do. We're positioning through the innovation and the heritage of innovation, Tungsam as a high-tech brand in different industries. So when I look at the main challenges of transformation, and I've highlighted here in red the ones that are closer to the brand, so the, the actual topic of today's presentation, obviously, we had to go through the, the different steps of the transformation. The company was not a standalone company. It was basically, if you want to, a cost center of a large, large company, GE. GE, as I said, uh, $130 billion of revenues when we, when we bought. We have around 300. So you can see the, the difference between the two. Not, the management was not complete. We didn't have systems. We had more than 200 IT systems, more than 100 shared with GE some of them still today, so we're still in the transformation of becoming a standalone, fully functional company. And that will probably last us until end of March. That's the plan. Um, strategy, what I just mentioned. So one part of the strategy is we need to preserve the core. So we're investing into lighting, um, also into new lighting. But then we have identified eight, nine topics left and right that are tapping into the scale and we have a large production scale, five factories, almost 5,000 workers in, in our factories. So how can we use that scale for something else? I mentioned aviation. Obviously, we can do any kind of metal parts, plastic parts, ceramic and glass. We are one of the, the largest consumers of electricity in the country because we have three glass furnaces, for example. So what can we do with the glass other than the glass for the lamps? So we, we went through that in the last six, seven months systematically, and we came up with those eight, nine topics. Just to give you another one, um, indoor farming. Um, you might have heard about this. So you basically um, have now in the US and in Canada the legalization of marijuana, cannabis, which is a big boost for indoor farming. Now, I'm not saying we will do that. But um, what it does is it's, it's allowing the industry to scale. So all of a sudden, where you had very expensive technology for, for indoor farming because of the boost, because of the, um, the demand which is growing in, in, in the US and Canada, prices come down, volumes go up, and all of a sudden it becomes feasible for other products as well. So for other products meaning food, meaning uh, plants for medical purposes and so on. So what we are doing, because we're coming from the lighting, but we also have the scale and we know the technology, we are going into indoor farming. For example. So this is one of the eight or nine topics. Again, so that means Tungstrom as an innovative brand, very important. Um, stakeholders. One of the, the things that we are, compared to our competitors, we are almost the last remaining European brand. So we produce in Europe, we develop in Europe. Um, so our claim is that we are a premium European brand. And that allows us, in some cases, to have 20, 30, or even 40 percent higher prices uh, in, in some of the countries, like Middle East. Uh, I mentioned Middle East, interesting anecdote, if you go to Kuwait, for example, and you ask for a lamp, you don't ask, give, give me a lamp, you ask, give me a tungstrom. So it's like Kleenex, or um, you don't say tissue, you say Kleenex. In those countries, because of the long history, in some cases, a state monopoly on lighting, you would basically ask for a tungstrom. So that's pretty strong. I mean, you, can, you cannot have a better start than that. Unfortunately, that's only only in the Middle East. Not even in Hungary, you say. So communication, thought leadership. So what, what is the topics that we should, we should claim as ours? And um, that's, you will, you will see, maybe if you follow us, um, we are basically more and more getting into, into certain topics as thought leaders in Hungary and, and more and more beyond as we have completed the uh, takeover of the foreign legal entities. Um, 
global brand building. So we don't have, we are a larger Hungarian SME, that's how I would put myself um, or ourselves, German Mittelstand, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to talk about that. Uh, that means we cannot do TV sports uh, in 120 countries. Uh, we simply cannot afford that. Uh, we will not have celebrities uh, uh, advertising us and stuff like this. So a lot of what we will do is going to be social media and, and um, digital um, events, fairs. Um, again, um, it's very important, I think, that we, we then very clearly define what we stand for. So it's... Um, and there's a, a couple of things I just wanted to show. So we were refreshing the logo a little bit. Some of you might remember the old logo, the packaging. Um, and I think it's very important, I used to be in the automotive industry, that you're religious about the logo and about the use of the, the colors and the use of the font and these kind of things. So we become religious about that and um, very, very strict. Uh, and that's the same for our um, um, appearance in fairs, in exhibitions, and so on. Um, doesn't work. There should have been more slides. Um, it's coming? Okay. Uh, packaging. So one of the things where we have, we have the right for another couple of, like, let's say one and a half years to use the G lighting brand next to the Tungsam brand. So we have been very specific in countries where we say, in some countries, Tungsam is stronger, we switch immediately. In some countries, G is stronger, that we have to build the brand. And um, in order not to confuse our customers, we have chosen a strategy in those countries where G is stronger, um, that the packaging, the colors will remain, at least for now. So that's basically, as I said, for the next 12 months where we have a transition period, we will, we will basically do that. And, um, the, the digital, mostly, um, campaign is basically, in these countries, new name, same quality. So you, you see um, Azure Bertil, which is illuminated by us, and then um, you just have the thing. So you basically see it's, it's and in the, in the newspapers and others, you see the side by side, you see the same, or sometimes you have a folder which you can open. But it's basically indicating that we were already in the past the supply chain, the factories of G lighting. Everything was in Hungary at the end. So basically everyone, the same people, the same factories, the same machines, everything the same. Um, now it's called Tungsram. And uh, this is how we, we are starting basically to build, to build the brand in those countries where uh, Tungsram is not so well known. So um, that's what I had on the brand. Um, I don't know if what's the organized, do we have time for questions? I think I have 49 seconds. So basically, that would be a very quick question. Thank you very much. <laughs>